Today's video is going to be a very special one. I had the unique opportunity of attending CES 2024 in Las Vegas this week, and it's safe to say that I got a lot of new insights into new technologies, breakthroughs, as well as innovation, particularly in the e-mobility space. And well, folks, at least for me, the most innovative and most interesting booth out of all these was Bosch Energy's and Nikola's hydrogen fuel cell demo right in the heart of CES 2024. So sit back, folks, relax, grab some popcorn, and enjoy this video of me in person with the Nikola and Bosch team. Hydrogen is obviously the talk of the century, but one company that is under-talked about in this race is Bosch. Now I've already talked about how Nikola Motors leverages Bosch's technology for building their fuel cell electric truck, which is basically the very first commercialized such truck in North America. But sometimes it's easy to overlook just how complicated a hydrogen system is. And here, Bosch lays it out pretty nicely here at CES. You have thermal management, you have gas purification units, you have control units for fuel cell pressure, recirculating the air, compressing the air, and also obviously safety sensing, such as a hydrogen injection system, hydrogen exhaust sensor, as well as an anode recirculation blower. All these, as you can see, are clearly developed by Bosch in-house, along with this fuel cell power module right here, which is based on proton exchange membrane technology. All these pieces basically come together to develop what is known to be a fuel cell electric vehicle and you really need one system integrator to tackle all these problems at once and it's pretty clear to me that Bosch is that company headed in the right direction. Not only do they have the hardware nailed down with all the manufacturing, the testing and the validation, but they also have a lot of the software, the connectivity and end-to-end -end solutions also nailed down in the form of automation sensing as, as well as data collection. So reporting live from the Bosch CES 2024 booth, I have to say I'm very impressed with what the company here has to offer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cover, cover, I mean, BEVs are expensive, any of these alternative new technologies are expensive. Yeah. Uh, but it's partially offset by government incentives, so. Right. Uh, got it, got it. No, that makes sense. And from, a, from your perspective, like as Bosch, what are the main things that you guys are responsible for on the vehicle? Because Nikola obviously is like the company that's marketing yeah. this, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Bosch is a key supplier for Nikola uh -huh. for these products. Um, so I guess the most expensive and most important part of this system yeah. is the, the fuel cell. Right, right. So this is, this is a Bosch component, um, purely a Bosch component. Like a majority of the parts are Bosch, like uh -huh. the compressor, the ECU. Um, and then we also supply like, like this has got Bosch stickers on it. This is a hydrogen distribution block. Got it. Okay. Um, and then apart from that, we also do the uh, inverter for the motor. Sure. So okay. Bosch is yeah. Bosch is heavily involved in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, just to right. Got it, got it. So a lot more of the core technology, right? Like the yes. powertrain and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, Nikola still does the um, the motor. Okay. Right. Right. Um, as well as like yeah, it's every part on this is is important yeah it wouldn't work like like this airbag here if it didn't hit like um but the tanks um nicola has sourced from another supplier oh okay okay got it i think that name is hexagon purus right the hexagon yes hexagon. Yeah, nice okay know. yeah i saw that right there that makes sense that's yeah. cool that's cool and from like a manufacturing perspective does hydrogen complicate things for like assembly or scaling it up to a high level because obviously that's what you need to reduce the cost right of the vehicle yeah, yeah. so what are the main challenges associated with that you think right now i mean the main challenges are just you know getting demand from the market right when right fuel availability is relatively low low right right um so yeah we can find an available nicola associate i'd like for them to explain to you what they're doing there so yeah 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 they have uh they have a sub brand in their energy unit called hyla yeah. And what Hyla does is responsible for is um, building out that hydrogen network in yes. the United States. Right. Um, you know, a, a lot of companies just do the trucks, right? And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. we have a truck, buy it. Yeah. But Nikola, you know, understands that they need fuel too. 
right. seems like a really dumb, simple problem, uh -huh. but it's a big one that some companies don't want to tackle. Right. Um, and and Nipple is going headlong into trying to solve that. Right, right, for sure, for sure. Uh, if your phone is hooked up, it'll all be controlled through here. Uh -huh. This is our, uh, well, that's our hydrogen capacity. Ignore the range. Uh -huh. You know, we've been flying around the block, Yeah. starting, stopping, doing hard accelerations. The truck is very confused right now uh, okay. about how far we can go because we've driven it not very far. Uh -huh. um, kind of the home screen, you know, we can, we have frontal cameras, we have rear cameras oh wow okay um, nice we can see our axle weights and then also you know like our hvac is all here uh, all of our settings traction control stuff like that all handled through here wow okay and this is all like it's pretty seamless here like it's not that hard to understand where like, what's where so <laughs> exactly so you know i spent a bunch of time in rental cars and every uh -huh. every oem has their own you know interface like this yeah yeah they're all terrible right they're all right. so bad right and uh this one is is really really good uh comparatively uh-huh oh for sure and then uh you can also see the the truck gps so like uh -huh. no truck route on the boulevard uh no hazmat down here on uh desert Inn boulevard you know we have some low bridges stuff like that oh okay so it updates real time basically yep. with the data wow yep. and you put your your load information in and uh, -huh. uh it'll only route you where you can go interesting yeah wow and is this also be able could you control this through app like a like yep. an ev yep so wow let's see here yeah so here's our we're in gamma seven uh -huh. we can turn lights on we can prep the interior you know hot cold we can lock the truck stuff like that wow. you can see its location wow okay kinds of things yep nice, nice is there more maintenance required with this guy compared to a regular much, engine much less maintenance, much less maintenance. There's, okay uh, there's very few moving parts right? right right and i mean even even the parts that are moving have such reduced friction mm -hmm. that um we don't we don't anticipate or and we don't um, design for replacement got it okay so like um, this is it's a cool technology actually uh -huh. these uh, compressors here don't uh -huh. have bearings don't have mechanical bearings oh really okay the, uh, the bearing is designed so that you know once the compressor starts spinning up uh -huh. it's designed to ride on a thin cushion of air so there there is no mechanical friction between metal oh there. wow okay yeah. okay interesting so that's an innovation from Bosch. Is, is that is that correct? True? Wow. Yep. Bosch okay. developed yep, specifically for fuel cells. Okay. Got because it. um, yeah, the in the bearings there's uh, grease usually uh -huh. right, to keep things lubricated. Right. Um, and uh, that grease can be a poison for the catalyst on the fuel cell. Yeah. So to yeah. get rid of that, we have this air bearing. There's no material or anything. It's just you know, air. Right, right, yeah. right. That's interesting. That's interesting. And in terms of like fluids involved with the system, like in a diesel, you have oil, you have, you know, coolant or whatnot. Are there less number of fluids with the fuel cell uh, that could reduce um, like maintenance or damage or whatnot? I'd say like from a purely number standpoint, it's about the same, but the cooling system is significantly more complex. Complex, got it. Um, okay. Like the cooling system, there's a special coolant that runs through here uh -huh. that is low conductivity. Okay. Um, so the coolant has to flow through the fuel cell. Uh -huh. And, you know, if you can imagine each cell is there's like a positive and negative. Yeah. Um, if the fluid's conductive, uh, right. then it's not good. There's an it's issue there. You'll, right, right. You'll lose electrons or ions to that fluid. Right, um, right. So this is a special low conductivity fluid specifically designed for fuel cells. For fuel cells. Okay, um, got and it. And then there's, you know, there's depending on the temperature of each component there's uh -huh. a different coolant network so there's really two main coolant networks there's a, a fuel cell coolant loop and then like a power electronics heat exchanger coolant loop okay okay um, and that and that uses just regular glycol coolant it, is that the coolant right there that is the low temperature low temperature coolant. The, got it okay and do the the cathodes and the anodes inside the fuel cell do they wear out faster than like i don't know gaskets in a diesel engine or whatnot or are they designed to run for, let's say, like, I don't know, 200,000 miles or whatnot? I mean, our customer requirements were that this is a diesel replacement, right? Right, right. So from the power standpoint, it's designed to pull like a diesel engine. 
And is this vehicle lighter than a diesel truck or is it equivalent to like a diesel, like in terms of gross weight? Yeah, so the truck weighs about 26,000 pounds. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. And conventional diesel is like right around there, like a little bit higher, like 29, something like that? No, no, a conventional truck is probably going to be, depending on configuration, like between 16 to 19. Oh, okay. So it's, it's Got little, it. It's heavier. It's heavier, right, right. Sure. So, uh -huh. you know, being a little heavier on the truck means that we can't quite put as much on the trailer. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. No worries. No worries. But, uh, so, a conventional diesel is only allowed to load to 80,000. Okay. So, we have a, being zero emissions, we have a 2,000 pound exemption. Yeah. We're allowed to load a little bit heavier. Okay, okay. Got it. And compared to like the, the fully battery electric trucks, this, is this lighter than those? The yeah. The Tesla's and whatnot. The truck is around 3,000 pounds lighter than the Ah, got it. The okay. Truck. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. So it's lighter and it has more range. More range. Right. Right. Got it. No, that's great. No, this is fantastic. I'm, uh, I'm really excited about hydrogen electric technology. So yeah. you guys are doing the right thing, I would say. It's so a, for sure. For it's sure. A, it's a modern marble. Yeah. Really yeah. Is. Yeah. I'm excited to see more of these on the road. Yeah. Help, yeah, you guys are the enablers, so yeah. you guys are doing a great job too. I appreciate it.